Hey, have you seen USA Today's Woman of the Year? Here she is. Yeah. It's, yeah no, 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 not the one on the left. She's okay if you're boring and into cis women, but she's got nothing on the cutie on the right. That's Rachel Levine, the first four-star transgender admiral in American history, or anybody's history as far as I can tell, but there's never been a better time for transgender four-star admirals. Everybody needs them. There's never been a better time to be a woman especially if you're a man. And let's face it, men make much better women than lousy old biological women do. Here's another woman of the year, Leah Thomas, the first transgender swimmer to win the NCAA Ladies Swimming Championship in America. People get into trouble for misgendering her, so if I were to refer to Leah as he or him, I'd be blowing up what passes for my career and you'd never hear from me again. But there's no chance of me doing that because she is so obviously all woman. Let's take a look at Leah. She is all woman. From her broad shoulders, complete lack of breasts, slim hips, and a full set of meat and two veg discreetly tucked inside her lady's bathing suit. I know that's everything I'm looking for in a woman. And you are too. If you're wondering how I know about her wedding tackle, it's because her college teammates have complained about her flaunting it in the girls' locker room. But let's face it, if you're the best endowed gal on campus, who wouldn't want to show it off? When Leah Thomas won her championship, the number two and number three placed women were such sore losers that they invited the fourth placed lady to join them on stage and huddled at third place together. Hmm, where's their sense of fair play? Those three gals should be lucky they're allowed in the pool at all, considering they haven't got a testicle between the three of them. Deborah So is the hostess of the Dr. Deborah So podcast and the authoress of the book, The End of Gender, and we're always delighted to see her. Deborah, uh, the whole Leah Thomas thing is interesting to me because it seems to be testing the our limits on this this is someone whatever one feels about trans issues people usually go to a lot of things that most of us wouldn't want to undergo whether it's hormone treatment and uh, the surgical removal of our most intimate parts but none of that applies here this is someone who has the body hasn't done a thing to their body but has simply announced that even though the body is unchanged they're a woman and they're now uh, going on the women's swim team so it seems like some kind of test of how far this can be pushed oh absolutely it's always great to see you mark thank you for having me back i mean i think that this issue with trans athletes in women's sports the same in terms of who's being allowed in women's spaces i know there was a case recently in the uk regarding a uh, rape that happened in a hospital on the women's ward um, that had been actually Mm. i mean there was no record of this because apparently everyone on the ward had been recorded as female but there was actually a trans woman there and so i mean this is a larger ideology that is showing up everywhere it's targeting children at increasingly younger ages and so i I think what's happening in sport even if we people do start to push back it's going to keep popping up in other areas and it's it's really quite disturbing what what's happening i'm puzzled as to why women and champions of women Do not speak out uh, about it. I mean, I feel sorry for these individual athletes. You train and train and train. And then somebody who's like six inches taller than you and with a totally different body mass just waltzes in and snaffles the, the, the thing that was your hopes and dreams. So I feel that just breaks any kind of uh, idea of, uh, of fair play in sport, apart from anything else. Uh, but I'm surprised, at, uh, but it's difficult to sort of champion that and turn it into a cause when so many of the women directly involved remain silent about it. Why do you think that is? Well, 
like you said, um, there are definitely differences between people who are born male and born female, and these differences are not overridden by hormonal suppression or taking estrogen. Uh, mm. I do think people are mm. afraid. They're scared of activists. Many people, understandably, don't want to be branded as transphobic for life for speaking out against trans activists. Um, but I also think it, it speaks to, for many people, they're busy, they have their lives, you know, they have a mortgage, paying for gas is exp increasingly more expensive. It day to day life is difficult enough. So why would you want to speak out against this unless you are personally affected by it? So we do see with say, um, female athletes who are having to compete against trans athletes in the, in their division, they are growing increasingly uncomfortable and vocal, uh, and more people are speaking out going on the record about this. But I think also what is, um, what speaks to the issue is that, say, with Leah Thomas's teammates, there have been media reports that within the team they are split. So some people are not were not in favor of her competing, and some were. Mm. And so I think this does go back to the the larger ideology, this idea that people are being taught in school that there are no differences between men and women, that you can pick your gender, that these differences between men and women are socially constructed. And so if you honestly believe that the only difference between men and women are socially imposed and that in the name of equity and inclusion, this is the right thing to do, then of course you would think it's only bigoted people who are trying to say that trans women should not be competing in sports and that any differences actually don't matter. But to go back to that hospital case uh, in the uh, English hospital you, you mentioned, the, the reason they didn't report that is because under English law, only a man can commit rape. So even though a rape had been committed by someone with a penis, uh, as they saw it, that person with a penis was a woman and therefore could not have committed rape as defined in English law. In other words, the old, the old line about who you're going to believe, uh, uh, me or your lion eyes, I mean, they're not actually believing what is before their eyes. We've, re we've reconfigured mass, millions and millions of people to look at something very basic in a completely different way. Right. And I mean, in this case, it, and in any case, when it comes to women's rights versus transgender activism, women are always going to be the ones to pay the price because act, this activism is inherently anti-woman. And I am in favor of rights mm. for trans individuals. I, I support them in their transition. Uh, I'm critical of childhood transition because this has been shown by research to not be the best way for it. As I discuss, yeah. I discuss all these issues and the science in the end of gender. But, you know, when it comes down mm. to it, I, it's it's beyond me. The fact that people who claim to care about women will be so fast to turn it against women and kick them into the ditch when it comes it comes down to the bullying and intimidation of trans activists. No, that's that's uh, actually uh, very true, uh, Deborah. And it's sad to me. You you said that people just want to get on with their lives, and I can understand that if you're an accountant or you're a waitress or whatever. But it seems to me odd that so many professional uh, feminist activists have stayed silent on this, with the exception of J.K. Rowling and Margaret Atwood. And I think that's because, as imaginative novelists, they sort of see something down the road as actually uh, leading towards ultimately the abolition of women. Thank you very much. As you said, you, you were ahead of all this in your book, and your book is a terrific read, Deborah. That's uh, Deborah So, the author of The End of Gender. Let's